Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 11 of our tile-based top-down shooter game. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a map editor called Tiled, which is a really powerful way to build your game maps and levels. So we have our game working pretty well now. Uh, the zombies, they, they move towards the player, but they're not particularly smart about it. Um, and you know they will go on top of each other like that if they get stuck in a corner they'll just um you know be right on top of each other there's lots of stuff we could still do um you can shoot them through here which is nice um but before we go into uh improving our mob behavior and um and doing any more um, graphical improvements I want to talk about our map, right? And so our map file, if you remember, looks like this. And this is really great for games where you have not a lot of um, variety or uh, or detail in your map. Um, and and to get an idea of what I mean by that, let's look at the uh, the art pack we're using, right? This is the the Kenny game art pack that uh, we took our player and our zombies from. And it comes with all this great art for making uh, walls and uh, furniture and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you look at the, the sprite sheet, it looks like this. Right? There's a lot of tiles here. And so if you imagined trying to lay out a map made of these tiles in this kind of style, you would have to assign a different letter or a different character to each one of these, right? And everywhere you put that, you put here. It would look like a big jumbled mess. It'd be really hard to keep track of what goes where and what it looks like. Um, and not on top of all that, um, things like this, like when you want to put the, the couch here, right? The couch is not square. Right, so it has some transparent portions to it where you see the floor below it. So you have to have a floor tile with a couch tile on top of it. So you need to have layers in your map. And it all starts to get kind of complicated. Well, that's where we can turn to some tools to help us out. And what a lot of game developers will do if they're if you're working on a really big project is they'll build their own map editor program uh, to use to lay out all their maps and place tiles where they want. And while that's a, a, that's a fun project on its own, um, we can turn to the internet to solve our problem. And so we're looking at a program called Tiled. Okay, it's at mapeditor.org. And this is an open source tile map tool. Uh, that is really popular, really widely used. It's supported in lots of different game engines, and it's very powerful. But it's also pretty easy to get started with. So you want to go to mapeditor.org. If you click on uh, download here, you'll see that they have downloads for um, whatever operating system you're on. So go ahead and pause the video and go and download this program because we're going to talk about how we work with it. Okay, when you open up Tiled, this is what you're going to see. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to make a new map. And so you can go up to File, New, um, or you can just click on the New Map icon right here. And if we click on that, we have some choices to make. Now, Tiled will do um, isometric and hexagonal shaped tiles, which is uh, something for another game series. Um, we're going to stick to orthogonal, which means straight up and down. Our grid is uh, a top-down view, so we're going to use an orthogonal grid. Um, you don't need to worry about the layer format and the render order. You can leave those uh, as they are. But what we want to talk about is the tile and map size. So the tile size you want to set to what you want the tile size in your game to be. right? And we've been using 64 by 64 tiles. So we're going to set that. And then you need to set how big your map is, right? How many tiles across and how many tiles down? Well, I'm going to do um, 
50 by 30, say, which means my full map is going to be 3,200 pixels wide and 1,920 pixels tall, right? Which is much bigger than our game screen, but we already have the scrolling camera, so we're going to be in good shape. So that's our map. So if we hit OK, now we're going to have a nice blank map of 64 by 64 tiles. Okay, now we want to import our tile sheet into here so we have all the graphics. Now, very important that before you do this, you move your sprite sheet file to the place where you want to have it before you start working with it in tiled. Because uh, if you move it after you've made the map and saved it, it becomes kind of a pain to get everything, to get the, the locations of the files right. So I'm putting it in my image folder where my other graphics are. All right, this is the same sprite sheet we were looking at before, okay? And so over here in this window is where the tile sets are, and it's blank because there aren't any. Well, just like with the new map, there's a button down here at the bottom that says new tile set. And if I click on that, I'm going to get some more options. So we can give this tile set a name um, because you might have more than one, you might be using more than one tile set, you can give them different names. I'm just going to call this the Kinney top-down Kinney top-down pack because that's what it comes from um, and then we need to browse to the location so we're just going to hit browse and go into our image folder where we put the tile sheet and we open that up and it will automatically have put 64 by 64 in here assuming that we're going to use tiles that are the same size as our map which is usually what you want to do. But if for some reason it doesn't say 64 by 64 here, you're going to fix those. And then if you remember from looking at, from actually looking at our map, uh, this, this sprite sheet, the tiles have this gap in between them, right? They're all uh, spaced out. And so that is what we set here in the spacing. So turns out those are 10 pixels. You can go look at the image and measure them, but I already did, and they're 10 pixels apart. Okay, so then I'm going to click OK. And there we go. It is now over here in this window, loaded all those tiles and put them in a grid. And see, I can click on different ones. Now, if you didn't get the spacing right, you'll see it won't have chopped them up properly, and the, the tiles won't be... Uh, looking correct. You only get half the chair or something. So you should see the right spacing of all these things. And like the big tree takes up four tiles because it's large, that kind of thing. Okay, and you can also over here on the right hand side there is a zoom drop down so you can zoom in and look at the tiles up close or zoom out and look at them uh, from far away. Uh, whatever is more convenient for you. And the same thing with your map here. This bottom right-hand corner here is showing you the zoom level of your map, right? And so you'll zoom in on your squares. Now, uh, let's start with this green grass tile in the upper left-hand corner of the tile map, okay? If I go out here on the map and click, you'll see I can place every time I click, and I can actually just cl click and drag as well, and I can paint my map with those grass tiles. That's a really slow way of filling it all in. So we could also click on the paint bucket tool here. If I click on the paint bucket tool, I can come out here and click. And now you'll see if I zoom out, my full map is filled in with grass. And that's a pretty good way to start, although it's very boring and um, and all looks the same, right? Because every one of these tiles, you can see that if you look close, you can see the repeating pattern of grass. Well, turns out there are multiple grass tiles here. So one thing I can do is I could highlight all of these grass tiles. So let me do, I'm going to hit undo, which is this button right here, to undo all that painting that we did. Go back to the blank map. Now, if I go back to, and I highlight these four grass tiles, then you can see I can stamp them all at once. So that's another way to get a large bunch of tiles out there at once. Okay, but that's not what I want to do either. 
You can also highlight multiple tiles like this, right? So I select the four grass tiles, and I'm going to click on the uh, old picture of the dice here. That puts it in random mode. So now every time I click, it's going to pick one of those four randomly. So every time I click, it's filling in differently. So as I paint or fill, it will randomly choose from those. Right, so I can go to the paint bucket and fill, and now I have random bits of grass tiles all over the place. Okay, and so my map is full of green grass. Let me zoom out all the way so we can see it. There's my map full of green grass. Now what happens if we want to place a tree? Let's just put one tree on. So I'm going to zoom back in. And since we're going to start in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to zoom, I'm going to scroll up to the upper right hand corner. Let's say we want to put a tree. Well, the trees were over here. And let's see, let's grab one of these small trees. Okay, so here's a tree. I want to put a tree. Well, if I put the tree, this happens because you see the tree tile, its corners are transparent. So we've now replaced the tile of grass with the tile of, that's the tree. But that's not really what we want. What we want is we want that tree tile to be on top of the grass. And that's where layers come in. Okay, this first layer where we painted all of the grass, I'm going to click on the name here and I'm going to call this the ground. Because one of the really powerful things that tile lets you do is draw everything with multiple layers. Right, so if I add a new layer here, again, the little new button looks just the same. I'm going to add another tile layer. We're going to talk about what these other layers are for later, but we're going to add another tile layer. Okay, and that tile layer we're going to call uh, trees. Okay, so now I can click on either one. Trees is above ground in the list, so ground will be on the bottom. So now if I click on trees and I click and place a tree, now that tree, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. I'll zoom in a little bit more. Now you can see that these trees are being placed and they're not removing the ground because they're on a separate layer that's being drawn on top of the ground. And you can turn on and off different layers so that you can see them better. You can change their order. Obviously, if I move the ground up on top of the trees, you won't be able to see the trees because the ground will be on top of them. So we definitely want the ground to be at the bottom. But there are my trees showing up. So I'm going to save this. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a new folder called Maps that we're going to store all of our game maps in. And you can see this is going to save in the TMX format. That's tiled's, the format that tiled save things, saves things in. All right, so let's just call this tiled one. This is not going to be our game map. This is just a test. So we're just going to call it that. Okay. So now it's saved and ready for us to start talking about how we load it into our game. So in the next video, we'll talk about how you go about loading this tiled map into your game and using it uh, as your game map. In the meantime, uh, practice with tiled. Experiment a little bit. See what you can draw using this great Kenny art pack. And in the meantime, if you would need some inspiration or you want to use my map, I have made this map, which is a little map where I drew uh, for, for my first level. It's going to be a little house where maybe this is where you start and the zombies start invading. I haven't decided yet, uh, but I have decorated it a little bit. It's got four layers. Okay, so I'll show you. We have a ground layer that's just the, the bottom of everything, right? Then we have the walls, and that is going to be the walls of the house and any other objects. And then I added some items in to make things look interesting. And then for the very top layer, I have a decorations layer, uh, which is just some more little frills and things to add to make things look a little more interesting. Um, so this is something you can start with. Um, I'm not totally finished with it yet. I'm still deciding what to put over here on this side. I was thinking of uh, 
maybe a police station or something like that. Um, so we have our little town that you're starting out in or that our, your player lives in. So this is going to be a map that we can use, but go ahead and feel free to draw your own. Um, the techniques we'll use will be based on this one, but you can do the same kind of thing with uh, your own map. All right, and I will see you in the next video. As always, please go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to the channel so you will get the videos as soon as I release them. Thanks.